What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Don't forget to hit the bell notification icon to be notified every time I put out a new video on my channel. Also, don't forget to sign up for my email list to be notified of what's going on behind the scenes. The link is in the description box below. Veruca Assault was a band that seemed to have success overnight, but just as fast as they rose, they quickly crashed and burned. This is the story of whatever happened to Veruca Assault. The band got their name from a character from the 1964 book Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Veruca Assault was formed in 1992 after Louise Post and Nina Gordon met through a mutual friend and hit it off and they started writing music together. The pair began playing Chicago area coffee houses and had their eye on expanding to an all-female quartet. The pair had put out an ad in the local Chicago newspaper looking for a female rhythm section but Post and Gordon would look closer to home, enlisting Gordon's brother, Jim Shapiro, who would become Veruca Salt's drummer, and his friend Steve Lack, who would become the band's bassist. Meanwhile, Post and Gordon would share guitar and vocal duties. The addition of a rhythm section would create the band's trademark alternative rock sound. Full of teen rage, Veruca Salt blended the sound of My Bloody Valentine and the Pixies. The band would play only a handful of shows before being noticed by the indie label Minty Fresh Records, who signed the band. Minty Fresh had previously signed Liz Fair and a handful of other acts. That's not to say that major labels weren't lining up to see the band. In fact, many major labels showed interest in the group early on, but Veruca Salt opted to go with an indie label first as there was a buyout clause in their contract and they felt more comfortable with the scale of what they were doing. Prior to being signed, Veruca Salt had already recorded a four song demo, but it didn't include their hit song Seether, that would be their first big hit. Regardless, Minty Fresh, which was basically ran by a 30-year-old guy named Jim Powers out of his Chicago apartment, loved the sound of the band and offered to pay to have the band record a single. That single would turn into Seether, All Hail Me. Since Minty Fresh Records was a tiny label, Powers was more in favor of first recording singles instead of full albums with bands he was interested in signing. In addition to that, Powers had to wheel and deal, and that he did. Prior to signing Veruca Salt, he would make a deal with a local producer named Brad Wood, who was short on cash but also owned his own studio. Wood had previously worked with other alternative rock acts including Liz Fair and Sunny Day Real Estate. Powers paid Wood money up front so he could come back later and either record 7 singles or 14 songs with any future band he signed. And Wood had envisioned that Powers would bring 7 different bands to record singles in his studio but since the Seether All Hail Me single was such a big hit within Chicago and on college campuses, Powers came back and asked Wood to use the remainder of his credits just to record Veruca Salt's debut album, American Thighs. By the end of 1994, Minty Fresh would sign a distribution deal with Geffen Records, who would re-release their debut album and give it the boost and marketing power it needed to get national exposure. The single Seether All Hail Me would shoot up the rock charts peaking at number 8 and garnered a lot of play on MTV. The band also got a prime spot opening up for Hole on tour and American Thighs would go gold selling over 500,000 copies. While the album would generally receive favorable reviews, not everyone was a fan. Some critics would slam the band for being just another group riding the coattails of Nirvana and compared Veruca Salt to the alternative rock group The Breeders who were also led by women. As the band's profile grew, in 1996 they hooked up with Nirvana producer Steve Albini to record a stopgap four song EP titled Blow It Out Your Ass, It's Veruca Salt. Here's Nina and Luis from Veruca Salt talking to MTV about why they recorded an EP that they didn't really care if it was successful or not. You know, I want to ask you about that. Well, I think we tried to diffuse the pressure of having to follow it up, follow up a big single with, with our EP. Blow, blow out, out your ass. ass. <laughs> um, really just so that we wouldn't feel the pressure. We wanted to put out something without a big single, without a big video, just for our fans and so that we had something to tide us over. And just to put something out, just to be a band, without all the hype and all of the craziness around it. Yeah, I thought that was a good decision. The same year, the band also appeared in Pavement's video for the song Painted Soldiers. The band would release their full-length follow-up in 1997 titled Eight Arms to Hold You. The album was produced by Metallica and Motley Crue veteran Bob Rock. Nina Gordon would discuss the band's ambition with her second LP, telling the Chicago Tribune, We wanted to sound huge. We wanted our boots to be huge. And we wanted a really polished sound. We wanted lots of harmonies, lots of overdubs. So we went to Maui and lived in this palace. 
like this incredible house with tennis courts and a pool and whatever. We made a record in a way that nobody makes records anymore, except for maybe Jay-Z and Beyonce. Veruca Salt once again had another success on their hands, led in part by the single Volcano Girls. The album would go gold, and while the band had a lot to celebrate, things would quickly fall apart. The internal strife within the band started to take a hold, with Post and Gordon having differences with one another. While Post and Gordon have kept quiet about what caused the tension between the two of them, they would claim it had nothing to do with music. Post would tell the Chicago Tribune, Nina and I had a defining fight fallout that we just couldn't get past, and that was that. And that's very private. And as tensions between Post and Gordon boiled over, the band also lost drummer Jim Shapiro, who only learned drums around the time he joined the band. He would claim to the Tribune that he wasn't happy with learning drums in public and all the scrutiny that came along with it. In addition to that, he wanted to contribute more creatively to the band as he was proficient in other instruments as well. Not helping things was that Post was going through tough times with her then boyfriend Dave Grohl of Foo Fighters. As the band looked to start work on their third record, Post and Gordon couldn't work with each other anymore and Gordon left the band in 1998 to focus on a solo career. Post would take a two year break before soldiering on with a new version of Veruca Salt where she was the only original member. In 2000, Post released her first album with a new lineup of Veruca Salt titled Resolver and while it wouldn't match the success of the band's first two records, it was a cathartic experience for her nonetheless. And Post would continue releasing new albums and touring under the Veruca Salt moniker until 2012 when the band announced an indefinite hiatus. Between 1998 and 2012, Post and Gordon didn't see each other once, but they would eventually resolve their differences. The pair could thank technology for reigniting their friendship, as Gordon would tell the Tribune. Over the years, there were a couple of occasions where we had to talk for sort of businessy typey reasons, and then I guess with the advent of email around the turn of the century, we would just send occasional friendly emails like on each other's birthdays. Post would add, there were like big apologies made during that time via email, and then that kind of just turned into just saying hello here and there. But there was also another band who inspired the women to put aside their differences. It would be the 90s group Mazzy Star, who in the 2000s, and more specifically their performance at Coachella in 2012, that got Gordon and Post interested in revisiting playing music together. Eventually, the four original members of the band would meet at a restaurant and offered roundtable apologies to each other and decided to reform. Everything would come full circle as the band would reunite in 2013 and would go back to Minty Fresh Records to release a new single with their old producer Brad Wood. The reunited lineup would release their first album together in 18 years with 2015's Ghost Notes, and the album would be warmly received by critics. The band has been active in recent years campaigning for various political causes, and as recently as 2018, it was revealed that Veruca Salt was one of many bands who apparently lost their master recordings in the 2008 Universal Studios fire. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again tomorrow on Rock and Ultra Stories. Take care.